set out among the protein chains represent the engines necessary for movement. Thanks to this complex system, which scientists have still to fully reveal, the cilia move at the high speed of 20 beats a second. The design in the cilia cannot be accounted for in terms of evolution, because the system only works if all its components are fully present. It is impossible for it to have developed in stages. In other words, for it to have evolved. There is another point which should not be forgotten. Cilia serve no purpose on their own. They need to work together with the mucus layer in order to protect human life and prevent the entry of foreign bodies. Mucus also turns out to be a marvel of design when examined up close. The mucus layer is rather thin. On the screen you can see a 30 centimeter ruler. Now let us have a look at a 1 millimeter length of that ruler. Now let us divide that 1 millimeter part into 600. 1 600th of a millimeter is so small a number that one cannot imagine it. That is the thickness of the mucus layer which protects your health. 1 600th of a millimeter. Moreover, this thin layer consists of two separate sublayers. The bottom one is rather slippery. This enables the cilia to carry the mucus in a particular direction. The top layer, in other words the safety layer, is rather viscous, which allows it to trap harmful bodies. These two layers never get mixed up or change places. In order to better understand the perfection of the design in the system, let us imagine for a moment that the layers did change place. If the viscous layer were at the bottom, then the cilia would be unable to move and would stick where they were. If the slippery layer were on top, then dust and bacteria could easily reach the lungs without being caught by the mucus. In either event, the system would serve no purpose and human beings would catch diseases which eventually resulted in their deaths. This system has been functioning flawlessly since the first human beings came into existence. Darwinists claim that this system came into being by chance, stage by stage. Yet that is impossible. As we have just seen, the slightest irregularity or deficiency in the system would cause it to serve no purpose. This is an important piece of evidence invalidating Darwinism. The cilia, which serve you day and night, the mucal secretion with its own very special design, and the aerodynamic design inside the nose all go to prove one very important truth. God created you. The artistry and design evident in every part of your body are proofs of the might of God. In one verse, he states, We created you, so why do you not confirm the truth? The longest leg on the journey to the lungs is that in the windpipe. The structure of the windpipe is yet another example of the perfect design of the human body. The walls of the windpipe are supported by C-shaped rings of cartilage. This allows movement in different directions. If the windpipe were made of flesh alone, the resulting softness would lead to constant blockages. That would make it impossible for us to breathe. 
If it were made of something as hard as bone, then our movements would be to a large extent restricted. Yet the cartilaginous structure which makes up the windpipe is perfectly suited to all kinds of movement and it always remains open due to its flexibility. There is another very special design right in the entrance to the windpipe. This design saves our lives every time we have something to eat. How is that? The esophagus and the windpipe lie side by side in the throat. One might therefore expect that when eating, as I am doing now, the food might get stuck in my windpipe and choke me. Yet nothing of the sort happens. Although I continue to eat and breathe, the food never gets caught in my windpipe. So what is it that protects me, and you of course, when eating? There is a small flap of elastic cartilage called the epiglottis right at the entrance of the windpipe. This flap automatically closes the entrance to the windpipe during swallowing. During all the thousands of meals you have eaten, from babyhood right up to the present, you have swallowed tens of thousands of times. And every single time this little flap has closed the entrance to your windpipe at exactly the right moment. Although you are unaware of its presence and can exert no control over it, this little flap has saved your life by closing the entrance to your windpipe at just the right moment. As always, the theory of evolution is quite helpless in the face of this system. It is impossible for such an important system, the absence of which would be fatal to human life, to have come about by chance, stage by stage. In the absence of that system, a human being would choke the first moment he took a bite to eat. This is yet another proof that God created all the features possessed by human beings. Body tissues produce carbon dioxide as a result of their daily functions. This carbon dioxide is carried away from the tissues by the blood. This blood, loaded with carbon dioxide, is dirty blood. In order for the blood to be cleaned, it needs to make contact with the air. The oxygen in the air and the carbon dioxide in the blood will thus be exchanged. There are around 5 liters of blood in the human body. In order to be air, this 5 liters of blood needs to spread over an area of around 100 square meters. That is equivalent to the area of a tennis court. Everyone watching this film has an area the size of a tennis court squeezed into his lungs by the incomparable art of God's creation. The lungs. The lungs consist of bronchia divided into hundreds of different tubes. At the end of each one of these bronchia fills the alveoli, or air sacs, the size of a pinhead. There are some 300 million of these air sacs in a healthy lung. Their total surface area is equivalent to that of a tennis court. 
The air passing through the bronchia fills the alveoli. The alveoli are covered with a dense network of capillaries, the smallest of the blood vessels. The alveoli and capillaries are separated from each other with a thin membrane. This membrane permits an exchange of gases between the blood and the air.